Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the village of Silchester in North Hampshire. It's very close to the border with Berkshire which is to the north. We're actually about five miles north of Basingstoke and we're going to be walking a roughly four and a half mile circular route starting just to the east of Silchester We'll be exploring the site of a Roman town, checking out a pretty church, a Roman amphitheatre. We'll be going through an enchanting woodland enclosure with a pond and we'll be coming back along the Brenda Parker Way. And hopefully we'll be having a quick look at Silchester itself at the end of the video. Now I'm filming at the beginning of July. It is another glorious summer's day. The sun's out, blue sky. Should be perfect conditions for a walk. Do come along with us. Well, I've parked my car at a free car park, the Silchester Roman Walks car park, which is to the east of Silchester. And we're going to start our walk by having a, an exploration of the old Roman town of Caliva Atrobatum. Well, right by the car park, there's a handy little map. I'll show you where we're going to initially start off. Well, there's the car park, so we're going to head along a footpath. And this area here is where the Roman town used to be. So you can head right through the middle, but we're actually going to head along the eastern side initially. Well, I've entered the location of where the Roman town used to be and I'm making my way along the eastern side on top of a wall. So let me tell you a little bit about the history of the place. Well, originally the area around here was a very large Iron Age settlement occupied by the Atrobates tribe that were a, a tribe that came over from Gaul and occupied a fair chunk of uh, Berkshire and Hampshire. Well, that all happened in the first century BC, but when the Romans invaded in 43 AD, they basically took it all over and enlarged it and it became a major town. And it was called Caliva Atrobatum after the Atrobates tribe. Uh, Caliva means woody place, I think. And it was a major crossroads of quite a few Roman roads. There was one road called the Devil's Highway that went all the way to London. There was a road to Bath and Gloucester that headed out to the west. There was a road to Sarum, Salisbury to the south and also a road to Winchester. And I think there might even be a fifth road up north somewhere. As I said, the Romans enlarged the existing area from 32 hectares to 40 hectares and created what was to be a very large town. There were something like 10,000 people here at one stage. And we'll see evidence of the old Roman wall around the site, which was built in around about the third century. And there are still parts of the large outer ditch of the Iron Age settlement on the western side. And just looking back here, so this is the, the path we're following on top of uh, the uh, embankment and wall on the eastern side. And as you can see, there's a fair bit of the old Roman wall still here. I'm well, just uh, continuing to circumnavigate the fort and still on the northern side. In fact, I think this is the north gate. Look how massive the wall is. It's great that this is all still here. So the Romans left in about 410 AD, something like that. But the site here was still occupied right up until the 6th century and after that it became abandoned. Unlike a lot of other uh, Roman towns like Dorchester and Winchester that of course thrived. A small settlement did continue at the southern end where there's still a church which we'll be seeing shortly. But uh, the bulk of that was deserted around uh, 1400, possibly due to the plague. 
The present village of Silchester to the west only started to become established in the 17th and 18th centuries. Well, just a little pit stop to show you where we've been. We sort of entered the sort of fort area in the far distance and as I say we've been walking along the top of the wall along the side. So this whole area here, well you could say it was about half of where the town was. Uh, where there's a sort of fence line across the middle, that's a path that goes right the way through it. And then the town continued on the other side. Well, I'm loving this little exploration, still on the eastern side and then another chunk of wall there. The whole area today is owned by Hampshire County Council and looked after by uh, English Heritage. And as I said, you can walk around it and there is a, say, a path that goes through it. The middle bit are now just farmers' fields, but it's amazing when you look out into the fields to imagine that there was once a huge town here. Indeed, it was only really when excavation started here in the late 19th century that people realised how important and big this place was. There was a forum and temples, all sorts of things, and uh, it's thought that one of the earliest Christian churches was built here around 360 AD, sort of southwest of the forum. It was quite small, about 13 metres by 9 metres, although I should say there's been some debate about that and uh, I don't think that it's been formally identified as a church. I'm not 100% sure. But uh, excavations in 1892 suggested a small building with a nave and aisles with an, an apse and a small porch. But there's certainly been a fair bit of excavations done in the last few decades and I believe back in 1866 they discovered a, a Roman eagle, a Silchester eagle, uh, which was, uh, I think, found wedged between um, two bits of wood in a building. It's now held at Reading Museum. But looking at the plan of the place, again, there were four main gatehouse entrances. I think the east and west ones were so large to allow a dual carriageway system basically due to the amount of traffic that was passing through. And the whole wall is something like two and a half kilometres round. Ah, another little pit stop, sorry about this folks, but it's one of those walks you have to keep stopping from time to time just to take this all in. I mean, I keep getting uh, amazed by this wall, how much of it's still left just here on the right. And then, oh, it's so peaceful as well. All I can hear is the odd bird tweeting away. Can you imagine 2,000 years or so ago, this would have been a, a very, very busy town. Whew, it's a hot one today for sure. Absolutely glorious. I've got plenty of water for both myself and Logan, so we're going to be hydrated, OK? Right, we're on the southern side where the old Roman town was, and it looks like there's a church to explore. And what a pretty church it is too, the Church of St Mary the Virgin. And the building dates back to the 12th century. Now there were two Roman temples uh, previously just to the side of where it is today that show on an old map. And the church today consists of a nave with north and south aisles, each of two bays. The chancel is actually longer than the nave, there's no actual chancel arch and there's a north porch and a south vestry. The wall of the south aisle was rebuilt between 1325 and 1350. And it's got a lovely bell turret, which I believe holds five bells with a single brooch spire. Let's have a look inside. Okay, so it is very dark in here, so I'll, I'll mount the GoPro on a tripod and hopefully the picture quality should be okay. So there's the font, which I believe is uh, what originates from the 15th century, although there is a fragment of the original font from the 12th century that's tucked away behind it. 
and there's a rather magnificent organ, beautifully decorated, uh, quite splendid uh, pulpit, which is uh, either late 17th or early 18th century, with the, uh, the cover above. And there's the bell tower with a lovely stained glass window behind. And the Sallys, is that one, two, three, four, five, yep. <laughs> and the altar with a quite stunning stained glass window with the full effect of the sun pouring through. And I love the, um, just on the side of the windows here, the flowers that have been painted on the side. Quite beautiful. Well, it's certainly lovely and cool in that church. And what a beautiful setting here. You can probably just see over behind me, looking over to the west, you can make out more of the Roman wall. Well, just to the east of the church is the old manor house. And I can only just see that over the top of the wall there. And it originates from the late 16th, early 17th century. There was an earlier building in the 13th century as indicated by an entrance to the church on the north side and the blocked off door to the chancel. Uh, that door would have uh, only been used either by the priest or the lord of the manor. And I was reading that King John visited uh, Silchester in May 1215, a month before he signed the Magna Carta and he probably would have been entertained at the earlier manor house that was here. Well, there's one more thing that we need to explore before we leave Caliva. And I'll give you the question. Apart from medication, education, sanitation, public water supplies, irrigation, public order, wine, roads, what did the Romans ever do for us? Well, they built this rather nice amphitheatre. And what a splendid amphitheatre it is as well. It's uh, slightly to the east of where the town was, originally built uh, between AD 55 and AD 75, made of earth banks with a wooden wall. It was enlarged in the third century and a stone wall added around it. And it would have had capacity for something up to 7,000 spectators. And there would have been bear fighting here as well as gladiators. And the Anglo-Saxons may well have continued using it, uh, but in the 12th century an isled hall was built in it and palisades erected on the banks. It may well have been a small castle at one stage, but it's in smashing condition still today. Well, a quick update on the route for those folk that might be doing this walk after seeing the video. We've uh, left Caliva and we're now heading sort of northeast and very shortly we'll be uh, changing direction and heading westwards. But we've got quite a bit of open countryside to enjoy. Well, the year really is 
flying by now, this splendid crop of maize in front of me here. Still some weeks away from harvesting, of course, but uh, in good condition nonetheless. Oh, we managed to find some water to cool down. Just what the doctor ordered. Where's he off to? <laughs> this way. Good boy. <laughs> well, folks, <laughs> this is one of those walks where somewhere along the way I took a wrong turning. I thought I was heading west, but I couldn't understand why the sun was burning into my back with the sun being in the south. But anyway, we've been heading north for some time. Oh, well, it did mean we passed a little uh, stream so Logan could get some water and we passed some gorgeous uh, cottages which we wouldn't normally have seen. But we're now heading uh, south again and I think we're back on the right way. Fingers crossed. Well, somehow we've made it back to the car park. Uh, we've done a, quite a big detour. Um, I've gone through Nine Acre Cops, Sims Cops. I'll put up a map of where we've been, but it was far, far further north than I was expecting. So I think what I'm going to do now is change the walk slightly. It's so hot and I've got to look after Logan. We'll just head to Silchester and have a little look round there, see if we can get some light refreshment and then call it a day. We were going to go further north and look at an Iron Age hill fort and what have you, but uh, we'll do that another day. OK, well, we're heading towards Silchester now and we're on a section of the Brenda Parker Way, which is a 78 mile long distance path opened in 2011 by the North Hampshire Ramblers in memory of Brenda Parker, who died in 2008. She was a, a prominent member of the Ramblers Association. I think she wrote a number of walking books and the waymark sign is a chaffinch because uh, Brenda was very fond of birds. Well, this is a, an interesting building here, built uh, of wood. And there is actually a sign outside that says it's uh, St Mary the Virgin Silchester Mission Church, but it looks pretty, pretty derelict. It doesn't look as though it's used. And there's another smaller wooden building just to the side. Again, that doesn't look as though it's... Uh, it's used at all these days either. And here we are at Silchester. It was known as uh, Silchester in the 13th century and Silchester in the 18th century. And over there's the Caliva Arms built in 1837, originally called the Crown. And it shows on a 1911 map as that. <laughs> we'll be popping in there very shortly. And then if I very slowly uh, pan across, this is obviously the sort of village green and, and the cricket pitch. And there's the village hall, which was built on land given by a local resident in 1926. Well, folks, we've made it to the Caliva Arms for a well-earned pint of seafare, as I think it's called. Oh, lovely. 
lovely. And of course, Logan's favourite, Piper's crisps. <laughs> so we've just got a short walk back to the car park and that'll be the end of our walk. <laughs> you want a treat as well? I must say, this is going down very well. Well, folks, we've come to the end of our walk. We thought we'd do the end scene here, back at the north gate of Caliva, the Roman town. We hope you enjoyed the walk. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up and a like, and do leave a comment, and do check out our Facebook page, Dave's Countryside Walks. We've had a super walk today, lots of interesting things to explore. And of course, the weather was glorious once again. So until we meet again, thanks for watching and cheerio. Good boy.